Good morning and welcome. It's midweek. Happy Eid, of course. Welcome to your new Metal Uno breakfast show, Wake Up Nigeria. You didn't say it's the B E A beautiful I mean, morning. I mean, drag your hair. <laughs> I mean, drag your hair. Yeah, it's a yeah. beautiful morning. Oh, uh, yeah. I hope um, your morning is as beautiful as MM's dress. Oh, thank you but, so yeah, much, man. We're going to thank ensure, you. yeah, we're going to ensure that we give you a wonderful morning, get you in that mood to celebrate Eid, and ensure that even if you don't have meat, just know that we you can manage more. You can <laughs> it can suffice if you don't have rap. My name is well, Mike Messikeno. And I am MM Ime Akwache. Do not forget that you can watch the show on Go TV at UHF mm. Channel 49. Channel and of different. course you could stream the show live. And for a musical performance this morning, we have Abdul Basit, Abdul Salam. He's going to definitely set the tone for the um, Eid, um, yeah, Eid, celebrations. Eid celebrations. Wow. And uh, finally on the show, we have Olu Dotun Fisayo. Uh, we'll be talking to him about his career, how much he has done, and what he has coming up next. What's the plan for today? Oh, tell what me, plans tell me, tell me do I have plan. for today? Okay, um, so I'm taking a short trip tomorrow, so I need to, you know, go and prep and get ready. Road trip today. or you'll, you'll, you'll be flying? Um, it's going to be a road trip. Okay, it's going right. to be a road trip. Um, so. It's quite an emergency. Was okay. it planned for? Um, so today we're just going to. I'm just going to do a few market runs. Okay. Market and um, runs. thankfully, the roads are free. Are they? Yeah, it's a public holiday, so what does I mean. It mean? It was no hassle getting <laughs> to the office this okay, morning. Okay, this morning. Yeah, yeah, it was such as, a breeze. As compared to yeah. last week and yeah. the days before and all mm -hmm. of that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, Muslim neighbors? neighbors? Uh, yeah, uh, no, I don't have something? any Muslim neighbors. So, uh, yeah, but... Someone, someone told me yesterday about how she, um, for some sellers now, she mm -hmm. stays, She was on the mainland and the friend was island, highland, lowland of highland. You know those island that all these... Bed you said up oh, okay. very far. Okay. I said I didn't sell her had she had to use dispatch and send her meats to her and all mm. of that. So I said, okay, that they were neighbors at one point in time. And then when she left, I was like, look, you're my only hope for salad meat <laughs> and all that. So, so that was it. But this year I see a lot of people there are a lot of people that I mean portable got five cars according to him. Yeah. Sorry, and then rams and all of that. So uh, this should be a celebration. I know I have I've been a good I've tried this year. I've been good. So yeah, but then I'm quite excited. I see the um, chair in the air. You okay. Know, there's a lot of love going around. There's mm. a lot of um, um, collective um, um, don um, contribution. Contribu yeah, exactly. You know, for we, you know. I was talking about that. That uh, if a family cannot afford a ram on their own, it's normal. Mm -hmm. You get together as a group. Uh, yeah, and get then yourself you something. buy one and, and then yeah, you share. And you share, and then I love the way deep fry. Uh, oh, remember <laughs> Halima's. <laughs> Alima, how you cook? Are you frying ram this today or tomorrow? <laughs> Alima is a producer, by the way. Because uh, we, need, uh, we need, you know, there's no, something no, no. about fried, yet. Yeah, no, fried no, ram. No, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, I know, she's, she, she's, not, she's not the best of center, but the thing is that her own is different. The way she used to fry it, it's deep fry. You <laughs> to enter. Okay? It's not the one that you're eating the ram and inside is white. No, deep, oil have to enter inside, deep. Company, then, you know, properly in that, in that, yeah, yeah, succulent. Yeah, yeah. You understand? In Ram, that is soaking it. Yeah. The oil have entered deep. Anyway, Mike is so just letting you that know that if you are in his vicinity, make sure you send my, him Ram meats because he obviously uh, needs My vicinity, I'm going to go my... Can't I just go to him in Moscow and eat Ram? Well, um, I think I'm the wrong person to ask, to and be yeah, honest. I, I mean... But I'm sure you should. Yeah, so Moscow, I'm like, praying this morning, like, oh, nice one. So, I mean, allergy, allergy, Kazi, my DOP, can I just step up to a mosque this today and have something to, I, I need to know. So, like, I know, I'm just walking out. It's, it's, he it said no. Sense, yeah. <laughs> I like Except it. if you're going to pray. Is, is I'm going to pray. Yes, no. Ah, it's not, 
So I cannot go to Moza and they give me ramen. I don't understand. Something. When you go to the church, you go to the church to eat. Oh, they are playing to you. First time us. Yes, we eat. Oh, yes. They go and they plan to eat. So after this one. You already know why Mike is visiting different churches it's, every it's Sunday. It's allergic. It's allergic as in my own because hey, you cannot be allergic for nothing. You cannot go and come back and then there's no ram from you. We, we remove the allergy from your way. If you don't bring ram for us today, we we'll remove the allergy from your name. But seriously, what's the point? Uh, okay, yes, we will move it. Kazim, Ram must be around for me today. But yeah, it's all about it's all about uh, the celebration and all of that. Yeah. And uh, we're at a time where it's not so easy for everybody, but hey, come on. I love the communal feel. Exactly. That everybody comes together. Exactly. Uh, they put themselves together and mm. all of that. And yeah, so just go out there, share the good chair. Mm. And, uh, you know... Talking about good chairs, so yesterday I went on some market runs again, and then... Ah, now every day they go market. You still go market my today. My darlings, you know, like... like... <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're going to market two days in the... What? What, what, what was yesterday market? Sometimes you just this. Okay, so for yesterday, actually, I, there were two different errands I had to run. Okay. Um, I need to refill my... Because my um, skin um, cosmetics, because, mm. like, I'm running out of, you know, um, mm. you know... Oh, wow. You know, you got to make sure that the skin is skinny. Hey, this day is just time. coconut oil. <laughs> coconut oil is also really elixir. But you know, carrot oil is also very good. Is it? Yes, you should try it. Carrot so oil it's, it's is also like, very good. So it's like, I, I love one, one, something that can do everything. So mm. like an elixir. So uh, that's what I think coconut oil is. I think coconut because oil actually sort of makes my skin dry. Oh. Yeah, for me it does. For you, eh? So I just resorted to carrot oil. Like natural carrot oil, not the ones sold in the, in the stores. Okay. Natural carrot natural oil. Carrot I have someone oil. who does it for So me. do you mix it into your cream or do you take No, I just it use it like that. Just like that, yeah? Yeah, I just use it like mm. that. So but the issue with coconut oil sometimes might be the scent. Smell, yeah. Is it a smell? The scent. That sometimes it's nice. Yeah, well, sure. You know? So someone like, oh, you use coconut oil. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm natural, you know? <laughs> Well, hey, come on. It's going yeah. to be a wonderful full show. I have to eat fufu today. <laughs> the lady that sells fufu, she has, she's, she's Muslim. And my area. Oh, so I don't know if she might not come. Yeah, she definitely won't. So I know where like, there's one place at that. Ah, this, the Edika Eko is busting my hair when I think about the Edika Eko. Ah, if you see this, this particular place, and the Edika Eko. And my oh, foodie, I'm the foodie. Wow. Oh, yeah. You are now. I don't reach you. Last night. At what time? Well, I was last night. Where, what did you eat? And what oh, yeah, chicken and chips. Ooh. Yeah, very, very, Vigimax. very... <laughs> big shout out to Steve, by the way. Very strange. Lovely. You didn't buy the money, did you? Eh? You didn't buy the money, did you? I bought that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I bought it. What? I just had I, 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 I mean, I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a baby boy. Uh, I should be uh, buying my money. Uh, but but the, 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 the potato was sweet potatoes. Oh, so I love... Yeah. I, when they say uh, chicken and chips, people use Irish potatoes. Mm. I love sweet potatoes are... That, 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 that meal is something else on its mm. own. Mm. You know, you can just take sweet potatoes alone on its own. It's sweet, it's lovely, it's refreshing, it's healthy. Oh, wow. And then the chicken was just some madu. Kind. Ah, and then, ah, no, 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 no. And I left some things for this morning so that I can, ah, <laughs> some of the chicken will go with noodles this, this morning. <laughs> ah, anyway, yeah, so it was Sufu here and we had that David O stuff. And social media doesn't want to let David O breathe. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, video doesn't want, want to <laughs> social media brief. Oh, okay. Which By the way, you ladies are looking beautiful. Love the, I love yeah. the the what was it called? What's this called? It's pink now. Chiffon. What, I mean the the material. Organza. 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 Ah. Yeah. Organza. So yeah. So back to the video and ah, the video is been trending for a number of reasons. You understand? Um, there's this lady. I don't. Uh, she's she, Anita? she's uh, yeah. Anita. 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 Who called him out with receipts? And it doesn't look like this one, they can, you can run away can from this run. one. Yeah. I, only for people to go back and, like, MM just showed me now, and they brought out lyrics. Mm. And I, 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 I recall one, one particular song. I remember that song, um, Philomena, Anomena, What of Carolina, mm -hmm. where he was talking about Caroline Danjuma. Mm. And, you know, there was a time when she allegedly was dating a member of his crew and something, something like that. There was a period, something was going on. So he mentions people. The, the artists talk about things in their lives mm. and use those kind of names. Mm. What I'm saying is that I can make a reference where we knew something and he used it in a song. Mm. So it has happened. I mean, uh, Dele 
Dele Namabo, you remember? Dele Momodu. To be honest, I don't know. Where he was calling out Dele Momodu yeah, at the time. Mo, yeah. You understand? When they had mm -hmm. issues and all of that. And of with course, the Sufi with the, the Sufi. Back, and yeah. they said to the but he used it in a song also. Mm -hmm. So we kind of see a trend mm -hmm. with David O using stuff in his life, his songs. Mm -hmm. And so they brought all this song, and Anita is there. Mm -hmm. Say, Anita, no do, make you. Assurance. Uh, uh, can you? Um, can you okay, so yeah, it? let me recall the. Um, Tweet because actually currently um, trending right now. Yeah. Um, so the lyrics of the song "Love is sweeter oh. when money ends." I love is sweeter. Pepe resto. <laughs> so brother mango got oh, that leave. That was Call wonderful. Anita. Oh. Oh. Tell her make she come the far away. Oh, wow. Far away. Make what you know the the, and I am looking for a sister. <laughs> mm. Choma, my lover. <laughs> so apparently mm. Anita <coughs> has been in the picture since 2017. <coughs> According wow. to reports, right? Wow. And um, so now she's come forward to say, "Hey, baby so boy." So I know the yeah. Is 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 fruitful and productive? What's fruitful and productive? The video. <laughs> so I really on this on this issue, yeah. A lot of people might have issues on moral mm -hmm. grounds, but for me, I I don't know. Let he he's, he can take. I mean, the canon is there. Maybe it's an inspiration, and Nikano can take care of all his kids. Don't do that. Don't do that. The, the <laughs> line I think you are towing, if it's the one I think you are towing, don't do that. Do you That's know why? Funny. Because this was also spoken about. Like, okay. if there's any other person now, you people would drag the person from heaven. But because of the video, now everybody's now trying to form her. No, but, yeah, but they're yeah. they dragging him now. Mm. But anyways, I think what I even <laughs> want to speak about was actually the genesis of the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Because in, like, from what she said, mm. from what I saw, she actually spoke about, that's Anita now, she actually spoke about the fact that she wasn't the one that actually even bro broke out the news. I actually said it from a blogger who, I don't know, she, I, th I think she had a conversation with her and all of that and spoke to her about it or something like that, but she didn't intend for her to put it up and everything. But the girl literally just went up and she posted it everywhere. So I, I'm not sure. I don't know whether she spoke to the blogger, she spoke to a friend who spoke to the blogger or something. The blogger. The child leaked, okay. Sha, the, child the leaked. story and all of that. And then she now tried to talk to um, the blogger to take it down or talk to the person that told her to take it down and everything. So at the point, the girl was asking for money before she takes the post down. So that is literally the whole mess. So that's why she, there's a the whole story of her talking of about how, David was really talking to her about how he's on tour now, he doesn't have time for this, please. Can she actually just put it out there that her phone got hacked? So now she's talking about how David told her to tell people that her phone got hacked. So there's literally the receipt of that one as well. Him also telling her. Yeah. So it's just a whole <clears throat> roller coaster of mess. Yeah. He's talking about how he doesn't want, to, want this to go out mm. and all of that. Mm. So I think at the point where she now started coming out to literally say, oh, yes, it's actually true. This is actually what when people said dragging her and telling her that she's sleeping with she, a married exactly, man. Exactly. So she not yeah. came out and they're saying, she, yeah. well, first of all, she didn't she know, didn't he, was know that he was married. She didn't know And all of that. She yeah. went through his space. Yeah. She never knew. She knew about the son that mm. passed and all of that. But the story of him getting married, she was, she not, was not aware, aware of it and all of that. Mm. So it's actually a whole. But he just married mess. recently. Yeah. And she's been there. Mm. And it's been an on and off so, yeah, kind of thing. So, yeah, according to her, yeah. So, the relationship has been, I, well, let's call it a situationship, right? Okay. Because we're not exactly sure the um, context as to which, you know, both of them are together, right? But in this situation, so she's saying that, so now she's pregnant. He didn't know that, you know, he's married. And, you know, and, you know, she didn't even know. She's in the U.S., right? And, mm. you know... She's not even aware that he's been married all this while. Well, right? yeah, and she doesn't still... understand why people are calling her out based on... Boy, has he been married up to a year? He's not been married up for... He's not been married for so long. To be very honest, I think the issue of marriage, people are just using that to just... Cover, to cover up. up to be true, true, true. If you cannot tell me so, you know David you don't know Chioma, mm, it's not possible. Mm, you say, fine, the wedding pictures are not out there, but you know he has a girlfriend that everybody knows. Yeah, but then a girlfriend and married. Our again. girlfriend. Exactly. Well, no, of course, yeah. But at the same time, she's farming that, okay, fine, she can be a fornicator, but she's not an adulterer. Please, what's the difference? <laughs> Yeah, because you see, it's I like is it that when you get I married, see, something happens yeah, to you and you, 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 you change say that into another person? A single, see, you're either you're either single or you're married. Mm. There is no in between. Yeah. At this day, and no, you can't say that. There's no in between. I, I can't say. I can't. I mean, you can't. You if can't, I give, it's only in these days where we have baby mamas and people if I literally cohabiting as and doing things that married people do. What makes you? We we we've gone to a point whereby you for you to be recognized as married in any country, you have to legally do it. And so, when you get a form and you're filling for any government agency or anything important, you, you, what, do you, what do you see there? It's only two. Single, married. married. Mm -hmm. There's no, are you in a relationship? Oh, in are between. you in a situationship? <laughs> in between. No. So, you have to understand, 
um, you are a lawyer, but you come on, Danny. My point is you fine. Understand? You understand? Even, you're even in the situation, so, yeah, um, fine. I am a lawyer. No. Yes, the law is the law, no doubt. Yeah. It's single or married. Yeah. However, there are circumstances that would take exemptions, and I feel this. So do we have them. any circumstances? So but anyway, no matter, matter what she's saying, sha, 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 everything happened in the period he was married. He was married. Ignorance is not. It's not a case in law. <laughs> so if you want to go the law route, <laughs> let's go there. But you see, but um. And then there was talk about how she's not the only one. Mm. That there so are a number of other ladies. Mm. Mm. is also mm. pregnant. But right now, there so. are actually allegations. We are not exactly sure. Mm. Some reports have come forward to say that, OK, um, they are also, um, um, that, um, what's her name? Choma is also pregnant. Mm -hmm. A few other reports have come forward to say that, OK, Anita Brown is not the only you person see. right now So there was a girl who was dating other, when other, yeah. with, um, so you So there are so many, yeah. so many you know, okay, so now. So now, I think the issue now is that we're not counting two-faced the video. Which one? <laughs> Which one are you? Because, OK, now, for me, this is it. And this is why a lot of my personal stuff would not and would never be outside. I would love private stuff to be private yeah. because he's, he's, he, he's, he has given so much to music and everything. And I would love to listen to his music or enjoy him without getting to know so much of his private life. Mm. Yeah. All, all I'm saying is that, first of all, it's not a crime. I'm not excusing or trying to exculpate him. I'm just saying that um, I wish that their private lives can be private to them and they really, because there's a lot of stuff. I mean, in your own life, there's stuff you will not want to come out. Of course, no, he, Every it's, single it's person. obvious, even with this, because I've read a number of the pages yesterday and like, even with, you could see his efforts in trying to, to not hide not this the, story. Exact, to hide this way for not to come out. And it was actually really sad. It was really putting in effort, trying mm. to talk to her and all of that. Mm. But then again, the blogger, I think, was the person that was being difficult, asking for money. He was like, okay, fine. He's traveling now. When he gets back, I mean, when he lands, he will do it, all that. So it was just a whole lot. So, yeah, so, yeah, so it's just I, sad I, that people actually take advantage and use the stories of these people's lives to their advantage. Yeah, but hey, that's so her sad. job. I think we need to say, yes. Yes, Mike, but it's you know, her she, job. Let me, you listen, know, I'll give her the listen, money. Why, wait, you blackmail wait, me. why do we get, it's not, okay, so let's leave the blackmail aside. In, in that regard, what she did was wrong, right? But we know w that bloggers right now are, there's a competition in the blogging industry. Mm. A lot of these bloggers are trending based on, first, first to, you know, to, to drop gist. First, I mean, look at the banking situation over the weekend, right? Mm. Yeah, that was that. I mean, um, Gis Lover was the first, you know, to bring that just to us before, you know, other people came forward and said all the, you know, things they said. So really, I mean, this does not in any way escapate the blogger for what she did. She did, yeah. Right? But in her, in her own professional, you know, um, in her own She's doing her, she's doing her job. job. Exactly. So whatever transpired afterwards, I also celebrities should also learn. I feel like we've had this over and over and over and over again. You learn to, you know, it, it doesn't have to get to that point where things go bad. Then you're now trying to do damage control. Right? So what, what, what could be done it. in scenarios like this? For heaven's sake, celebrities are like, they are what, um, it's like, they are, they are fishes. People are constantly, you know, going after yeah, them. Sharks trying, sharks to, trying to, you know, eat, go after them. News. Do you understand? So you, so should you do also your... need to try to do whatever you can to control your 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 behavior, your idiosyncrasies. Mm. Mm -hmm. so what what, what could have been done? Yes, what could what could he or any other person in this scenario have done better to ensure that their private or their privacy is not, uh, Stay faithful you know, to your wife. Oh. In summary. <laughs> yeah. If you just, you just, you just, so you just carry us. Because I mean, you see his performance on stage, and somebody's literally trying to shake her booty, and he's like, oh no, he's trying to. Rest. Everybody was healing. We were healing. We're all healing now. Like, oh, he was dodging. Oh, he was dodging. Yeah, nah. Oh, faithful man. Yeah, so yeah. he's faithful in the outside, but uh, in this. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. no, see, anyways, look, I just, my, think, my, the, I, I just want to mention that the marriage thing is very recent. So mm -hmm. a lot of when this thing was happening with this it's person, still not an he wasn't married. He's married. He married. Was he married? Not married. He's married. Anyway, they said we should ask Bonner Boy how he does it though. That Bana Boy has not, we've not heard that Bana Boy has one. They say if you carry for Bana Boy, you're on your own. So let's ask him. So, well, uh, I <laughs> hmm. for me, I, 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 just, I, just, I just wish private stuff can be because it's, it's, it's hard if I'm not a re reality star. Hmm. Having my personal life out there. You're a star, Mike. Out, you're a star. There's some things that if they come out now, uh, eh? <laughs> I, 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 I cringe to think about it. Wow. You don't have, I'm I mean, like, I'm seriously. Go after you. Go, go, go. go. You, you, go, go your history. Your background. You will fish. You will fish. I'm not saying fish that die inside water. <laughs> that you will fish in that water. <laughs> <laughs>
wish we die. But hey, come on. Uh, let's hear your thoughts, yeah? Let's hear your thoughts. We're not trying to uh, say that he's not culpable or whatever, but I'm just saying that private stuff should remain private. I don't know. Find a way to keep your private stuff private. And bloggers, yeah. please operate with conscience. Okay, use the hashtag uh, Wake Up Nigeria on TVC at TVC Connect uh, to, of course, interact with us. Yeah, we'll take a time out now. Yeah, there's a lot more coming. We'll be back. Thank you so much for staying with us. You're still watching Wake Up Nigeria. And it's time for the newspaper headlines. And I'll be starting, of course, I have uh, Mike here. Mike, how are you doing this morning? People don't used to give your analyst pizza. Then I will give you analyst and champagne. <laughs> I'm supposed to be taking care of your analyst, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, dear, is, that all, is that all you want? I got you covered. Okay? No, let's start with that. I got you. Okay, so yeah, now... I said it on L. I will drag I you if I don't get it. I got, when I say something, I mean it. Don't be doubting me. Anyways, we're starting... You don't? With... You don't, don't talk? <laughs> <laughs> We're starting with the Punch newspaper this morning. So from here, we have subsidy removal. Uh, we're saying poor Nigerians will hit 101 million without palliatives. Now, this report came in from the World Bank. Um, okay, so I think I actually read a bit about this, and I hear that um, literally this is the fastest, I mean, inflation, talking about mm. Nigeria now compared to the rest of the world. Yes. And then we've had even a surge, because 4 million people also hit inflation, rather have actually even gone poor from uh, from f 1st of January up, up to until now. Yeah. And uh, it's actually really, really crazy. So, um, you know, sometime a few years back, yeah. um, we hit we hit the top of the table when it comes to mm -hmm. the country with the most extreme poor people. Yes. Nigeria was yes. Uh, number one, mm -hmm. you understand. And uh, uh, and what what is happening now is that that doesn't seem, it seems like uh, that position we are even going further. We are beating our own stands. record. We are beating our own record as yeah. it stands. And, mm -hmm. But from what I see here, what World Bank, mm -hmm. based on this headline, yeah. what they are trying to, um, to, to put out there as a solution or as a panacea to this is not, for me, it won't work. Talking about, uh, you know, the uh, de demand cash transfer scheme for poor Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a panacea, that, that is not it. You need to ensure mm -hmm. that the things that are around, the, if uh, we, we, we should have an economy not entirely dependent, dependent on, on yes. fuel. Yes, true. So true. what happens is that if the fuel has gone up, then we should have alternative means by which our economy can be run. Mm -hmm. What I mean is that, look, yes, there's a fuel issue. But you know that a lot of businesses now run on fuel and diesel. Yes. So the point is that if power... Mm -hmm as the infrastructure can be sorted, is, is set, exactly. can be sorted out. Exactly. That will take a whole, a whole lot, lot of burden yeah. from, you know, from, from that, and it will help. So if we put other things in place, mm -hmm. okay, what? You give somebody, say, what, 20,000, 30,000? How long would that last? How many months would you give it for? So the same thing. So, so, so I, I'm trying to say how yeah. that will work. So, I, I mean, how would that work? Yeah, how would that literally help alleviate from the poverty? Because the truth is, over the years, different factors have actually contributed to the poverty of Nigerians. Mm. So now this full subsidy, of course, is one that is said, for, I mean, move the quickest to literally bring people to that point and all of that. I mean, four million people in just about four to five months. That's definitely um, crazy. And then people, there was also a conversation about different um, other issues. People might actually start looking to pull, for instance, now pulling their children from school to also mm. help the family not go under, not going to the hospital thinking that, I mean, those bills would definitely help them, I mean, add to what they have at home. So it's actually a situation where um, I don't think palliatives is what we're looking at now. We need more, yeah. um, more sustainable means to actually That's just it. Get, get the economy working yeah. in other places. Something I just want to point out here, yeah. Tinubu, uh, Khan and governors preach tolerance at Salah. And this, yes. is, for me, this is big. Yes, Why it is, is it big? Because it um, we have never... Up until the last election, we have never in recent times been so divided Very along true. tribal and religious lines like it happened during the elections. True, true, true. After the elections, we've had stuff a lot of times. It mm -hmm. seemed as though it was Christians against Muslims mm -hmm. and all of that. It should not be so. Mm -hmm. And then even Christians themselves against Christians, you know, different factions, factions. not so much happening. Tolerance. Yes. And that is it. I mean, you have a president whose wife is a pastor. Mm -hmm. True. True. He is a Muslim. His wife is a pastor. That in you, you is an image that actually exactly, yes, exactly. Yes, that should that should just let. I mean, think about how mm -hmm. the home would be. So somebody who is who thinks that way. I'm just saying. Yeah. Imagine somebody who in his home, yeah. his wife is a Christian. He's a Muslim, a devoted Muslim. Mm -hmm. His wife is a pastor. Mm -hmm. 
So think about the dynamics still in the, the house. Yes. So that person, so the, exactly. So that kind of a person can understand what it means to tolerate each other. Yes. So as a country, we yes. should. It, 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 it's not. It's not. It's not something that we. It's not dispensable. It's not something that we can just. We have to. We have. We to. have to. Yes. I love that. I mean. So. Tolerate me when I come to ask for RAM this morning. You must give me RAM. Like, if we'll, not... Please. Okay, I mean, I, th I think we'll take that, I mean, for the nation. Um, that's where we had the headlines for Eid El Kabir. Now, moving on to The Guardian, we have... I, th I really want to talk, touch on this motorist situation. Okay. Um, the motorist to pay 1,000 naira for proof of ownership certificates from July. That's next month. So now people are talking about the subsidy and still trying to grapple with that and balance out. Now, there, this is another levy being put on car owners in Nigeria. So now, what do you actually think about this one? Oh, the, it's a certificate that was actually given free of charge initially. This is not This is not the best time to start. I mean, to start, that. To start with that one. That's yeah. for me. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, we, well, but it's not also the first time where we heard about someone wants to start and then when there's an outcry or there's some kind of pushback and then those things are... Taken away. Okay, so, so I, on that point, I would say, to be honest, yes, I remember that. Because I remember the remote of subsidy also wanted mm. to happen before. But then again, to be honest, I don't think this is the government that, for that. I don't well, think... I, I, I feel like, I, feel, I will get into details, but I feel like, look, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it can also be pushed back. At this point in time, I, I, have you seen, I saw some documents that some car, there was this guy, there was a video that was trending some months, some week, weeks back, mm -hmm. about this person who was transporting food mm -hmm. and how much, how many levies and dues he had to pay. Yeah. You need to, it, it seemed like uh, which office, you know, when you go into this government office and you, you, if you see the pack mm -hmm. of levies and dues and stickers yeah. that this person had to pay at yeah. different points and times and all that. And he said, Look, this food is cheap. He was transporting yam, I think it was from Benue State. Mm -hmm. The yam is cheap. When now I put in my, the, my, yes. my transportation cost, yes. when I put in all these levies and everything, mm -hmm. it now falls down to the end consumer. Yeah. You understand? So we have to find a way. They are already too much. So we cannot, I, I, do, I don't think it's in our best interest at this point. At this point. You know, so I feel like if we look at it more, there can be a pushback. And it's not, it's not, it's not a stuck in iron. It can be, it can be reversed. It can be reversed. You know, but if it's not necessary, if it's not necessary. Mm. I don't see it as a necessity, to be honest, because I mm. believe cars, I mean, we have different specifications and I mean, documents already in the cars to check for the ownership and all of because it's just basic information the certificate is going to hold. So um, let's move on to the daily trust. Now we have economic security challenges surmountable. Now this very, is what um, um, Tinubu is saying. So in what direction very. do you think he's referring very. to talking about very. this? Very. I look when it comes to um, when it comes to security and all of that. Look, the major challenge I would have mm -hmm. is saboteurs. What I mean is that look, you have people, mm -hmm. and that has always been a problem. You have people who are inside the government, right? People who are inside the government, people who are inside uh, the administration, who give information to these terrorists and all of that. You know where they are. Let me tell you, if a people are united, if a people have a common goal, yeah. terrorism can be easy to defeat. I mean, true, there's true. a saying that is true. being credited to a true. former head of state true. who mentioned that if terrorism is more, stays more than a week or two, then the government is involved in some way or the other. Or the other. But we know that, look, this is what has happened. We've had past administrations where people inside the government have inside information. I mean, the other day, it was the governor of, um, of Kaduna who mentioned that, look, we hear them, we know what they say, we, we, we can intercept their communication. Challenge, uh, insecurity, it is, if, just like what the president said now, yeah. it is, I like that he's saying this, mm -hmm. so that means that there's a mindset that he's going there with. Yes. It is not something that we have to, deal with and say okay it is now become a way of life yes we cannot say so no, so if he has come out to say that they are surmountable then respect that they are putting modalities or they're putting structures in place true you know to, to actually ensure make it, something i like about this, so far, this it seems like a very decisive one right let's, literally let's that knows it's like they hit the ground let's running start, let, yeah so of let's course let's start seeing the implementation seeing of all the of these things and yeah i mean i believe we're in for a very interesting four years mm. and maybe eight years. Thank you so much, analyst Mike. Oh, <laughs> we'll bring Steven. your tea, coffee and champagne in a bit. Okay, fast, <laughs> Is that fast, right? fast, fast. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for staying with us. There's still so much more coming up here on Wake Up Nigeria. Do not touch that down. We'll be right back. And we are back. Thanks for staying with us. We apologize for the break earlier on. Um, on relationship segments this morning, we will be discussing harnessing the power of intentionality in dating. And of course, we have with us Dari Olatoye. He's a visionary entrepreneur and the founder of 
True Flutter. You are welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now let's get right into it. Um, intentionality in dating. Let's first of all talk about um, intentional dating because it's actually a thing. It is. Yeah. It is. So um, help us, you know, understand what it means. Okay, so first thing, I, I, there's a certain perception that um, ladies should wait for their husbands. Even the Bible says, he who finds a, finds a wife, finds a new mm. thing. So a lot of ladies expect to be waiting for their husbands. But I always tell people that they should be more intentional. You should go out there more and try and go on several dates before you meet the right person. Mm. And it should not be a sitting duck or a damsel in distress waiting for someone to come save you. Well, uh, when you talk about dating, how many pe how many dates is one is a woman supposed to go on? Because, um, well, you know, there's there's a, there's a general nar narrative about you know women, you know, in this climb where you're you know in multiple relationships or you're in yeah multiple dating situationships, <laughs> right? Um, and then there's the issue of body counts. There's the issue of moral values that's been questioned. So um, how is um, a woman, you know, in the context that you've put it, how is she able to, you know, um, balance it in a way that, you know, all of these questions do not come into, you know, play? Yeah, it doesn't have to be body count. It just be dates. It could be coffee. It could be lunch. It could be dinner. It doesn't have to go deeper than that. But what I just say is that you, you have more opportunities to meet people and to get to evaluate them and make decisions, you know, and make decisions if they're the right people. So it doesn't have to be body. It doesn't have to lead to body counts. Mm. But I just say that if you have more options, you have more people to talk to, then you can actually decipher if the person is the right person, you know, to, to date. Okay. Um, now that also sort of puts the woman under pressure where she's being, um, because, she, I mean, there's also the, um, her not wanting to come off as being pushful or being too forward. In a case where, okay, in trying to create a scenario here, right? You've been in multiple relations, multiple dating situations where, you know, you have met all of these people. And, you know, amongst all of them, because she, you know what you want. The woman in this situation knows what she wants, right? Mm -hmm. And she eventually, you know, in all of this, with, in, with, you know, in the area of men she's met, she finally finds one that she, you know, is in sync with, that she connects with, that she, you know, would like to do more with, right? Mm -hmm. How does she communicate it in a way that doesn't seem like she's being, you know, pushful or too forward or, or she asked me out sort of situation? Because it can be misconstrued. <laughs> it's not about asking her, asking the, uh, the man out. It's about asking the right questions. You being able to know if you both are lying. You have the same vision. You know, it's, you know, a lot of people say that, oh, don't ask some certain questions on your first date. Mm. But the question is that, why wait a long time when you can just ask these questions and get the answers now? Now, when I say ask these questions, I'm not saying that you should ask them if they can go on a date with you or they can date you. But ask the right questions if they actually align with your own vision. If you're, you're in sync, you're on the same wavelength mm. regarding what you want for yourselves in relationships. Because there are really some people that are time wasters. And some people can have conversations exactly. with you for months exactly. without telling you anything your, their mm -hmm. intention. So it's also good to be able to clarify those things maybe on the first date or the second date. And you know if it doesn't work for you, they can you move, move on, on to the next person. Now let's talk about some of these questions that you've brought to the fore. What are the ideal questions that should be asked on a first date? First of all, his vision. Where does he plan to? Where does he? What does he plan for himself? His life, his career, and how does he treat other people around him? You know, his family, even the people he doesn't know. Mm. How does he treat? Is he a family-oriented person? People have different. I mean, what what are his values? I mean, religion also plays a role. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, we're from like we have different religions in Nigeria. So all those kind of questions. Are you a Christian? Are you an atheist? Scientologist? There's a lot of things you need to ask. And most importantly, how does he treat other people? Mm. You'll be able to know and to be able to figure out how will, how will also how will the person would also treat you. Mm. Now let's talk about approach because um, to some men they could feel uncomfortable being asked these questions. They could feel like you're badgering them. Like it's a first date; we're just here to just eat and have fun. Why are you asking me all of these questions? Because we've you know seen um, instances where some of this you know this has played out. Mm. So. Um, Let's enlighten us a little bit more about, you know, how to approach this. In a, in, in a, so it doesn't seem like she's being too um, 
confrontational or being too, you know, she's badgering him. More like so it. first of all, I don't want I don't want it to sound like it's only ladies that need to do this. Men also need to do this. Mm -hmm. So they need to ask the same questions. So it's not okay. so it's not one side. It's actually a two way street. Okay. Second of all, there are ways that you can ask questions that doesn't seem confrontational, but you know you can actually jokingly ask those people, you know, without you them feeling a certain way. But most importantly. If someone has an ulterior motive, there's a way they'll react to those kind of questions. Mm, so if you also need to pay attention to their body language. Their body language and how they react. But if it's someone that had an ulterior motive, then you will react a certain way. They you know, okay, this guy's not serious, mm. or this lady is not serious regarding, you know, what I want or what I want for myself. It's how they react to that. It's very important. Okay. Thank you so much, Dari. I'm sure someone watching right now has been able to get, you know, one or two things from this conversation because it's very important. Um, and, um, yeah, intentional dating, as you have mentioned. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And that's a wrap on the relationship segment for now. It's the top of the hour. People Wake Up Nigeria continues in a bit. Stay with us. Good Welcome morning. Welcome back, people. Yep. You're still tuned in to Wake Up Nigeria. I mean, we've given you everything here on the show, from tips on wellness and self-care to mouth water. Well, we haven't had our recipe yet. So our show yeah. has not arrived. I guess it's stuck sure. in some traffic somewhere Okay. in but, Lagos. Yeah, <laughs> but then we're giving you some relationship tips. Mm. I love that intentionality. What what what, are you, what is your highlight from that intentionality? Questions. Dating? The I questions, I do questions to ask on your first date. Because oh. I mean that's been a controversy over the years. I what do questions. questions should you ask? So all you ask genotype? Why would I be asking genotype on well, some people say, so people say so that look, let's just be sure so that we don't move forward if we know that wait, where is this thing I, ending? I feel like first dates is that's too much. Okay, yeah, so what should you do for first dates? I think first dates just get to know each other, you know. What what are your career goals? Oh, career goals are okay, career goals you tried. I, I I wanted to cringe. I thought you were oh, what's your favorite colour? No, you no. <laughs> but hey, come on. <laughs> uh, that's what we give you on the show and more. My name is Mike Messicano. And I am MM email quarter. Do not forget that you can watch the show on Go TV. VH channel 16. 16 go, go and go TV. TV, yeah, UHF mm. 49. Mm. All right, definitely, of course, you can hit us up on social media across all uh, social media platforms. Now, he is an Islamic Afropop singer, a native of Ogun State. In and finally, we have Olu Dotu. He's an award-winning filmmaker who's renowned for directing many films with global recognition. His latest short film, Lost, but found chronicles the struggles of the girl child globally. And wow. it recently won the Native Shorts 2023 competition. Ah, okay. So... But, but yeah, before we, we, we spoke about us, let Winfrey tell us what she has planned for today and tomorrow, yeah? Oh, okay. Winfrey, what's your plan? What's, what's happening? Where are you eating ram meat? What's, are you in your deepest like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was yeah, just wondering. Say we it's it's, it's oh, a public yeah, holiday now. I was actually two, talking two to, Yes, we're actually planning it. Okay. So this is something myself and my husband do, actually. Okay. So, like, we know the families that, they don't miss it all. Oh. Every year, they slaughter ram. So, and it's around our vicinity, so we can throw okay. here. So they're like three. Oh, who? So just enter, 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 you know. So because this yes. one now, uh, 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 allergic asthma is not giving me hope. So it's like, I will we pull on you now? Okay. <laughs> you give me allergy. You wake up, I'll be talking about that. You don't look at me like, this one, you never know what's in there. You don't know what is coming for you. you like, look, I'm buying one more I eat today. But, but I actually like it. I mean, I, I love the fact that this particular family I'm talking about, they don't yeah. miss it. Okay. Like, they're actually two brothers. They live mm. side by side. Mm. And all of that. And all their children, she comes to the house. So it's I, actually a nice time with your you friends. Know, talking and all about that. even having people really together. I remember mm. growing up, there was this house opposite our house. Mm. It was a an allergy that owned it um, and then every morning Mike mm. every morning mm. he would have people gather and then they yeah. would eat he would feed all of them oh, yeah. they every single morning. and then the Salah holiday it was I think it was the highlight of the year it's for like them festival. because he would kill rams mm -hmm. for these people and they would eat and they would even have enough to take to their families you see them live with nylons of yeah. rice yeah. and meats in it mm -hmm. oh I mean, it, yeah. it was always beautiful. In Abuja, that's literally what it is, right? Because even in Abuja, normally you actually come out, because normally when they build their houses, they actually build this space, yeah, space in front of for the house, the, yeah. where people actually gather to just call. You just, they just come yeah. outside, sit down. They have this communal sense of community. Yeah, com and you, it's know, you, know, really you know, if I see some yeah. piece that I'm in my mind now, eh? Say it now. Oh, no, 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 I can't. 
I've been insulting some people. You've been insulting because them? because the, isn't this what mm -hmm. I, I feel like the most important mm -hmm. commandment, um, mm -hmm. dogma, theology of all so is you know love. That, yes, of course, you know. love, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. tolerance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he didn't. He, when you are coming, he will not ask you to show yeah, your tolerance. Yeah, exactly. He will exactly. not ask you to show something yeah. to show you. That. It's yeah. for everybody. Yeah. That is what mm -hmm. whatever you, you know. We found different ways to communicate with yeah. deity as it mm -hmm. were True. we found mm -hmm. different religions but i think that at the end the most important thing is love is love and care for and humanity kindness. and right. that that is the yeah. most it is the most important thing and i don't care about religion yeah i really don't i, I do really that. don't once you can when you just said this thing i mean think about people like that i mean <sighs> even growing up now since you have, when i mentioned i actually remember the same thing every sala we don't use we have rice and meat Delivered to us every salad. Yeah. So I know, and it's the same thing for Christmas also, mm -hmm. where people also share. Mm -hmm. So yes. I think that we should have Christmas and salad every month. Every month. Yes. <laughs> so that people can learn because maybe it's only that time so people will know that ah, it's, it's, you, you have to think of your favorite Mike, man. Mike, the reason why you are looking for the person that will bring you salad. No, 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 no. This is not about me now. It's not about you. It's about who. If yeah, you give to me. others, they will give to you. This is not about me. I, yeah, I, I think it, it, it comes yes. down to everyone because, yes, I mean, yes. as much as you're saying it, you should also ask yourself. Yeah. I mean, oh, I'm also oh, asking yes, myself. Like, oh, for, definitely. Um, I mean, um, definitely. who am I going to show love today or how, have I, how am I going to show love to someone mm -hmm. today? Mm -hmm. You know, in regardless of, I, I don't need to know this person. Yeah. It's in the little things at mm -hmm. the end of the day. It's in mm -hmm. the little things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's be intentional. I'm already thinking so about how I show some love now. Eh? I invite us to come and eat. By what? Chicken. Ah, it's a grace law. You can't be buying chicken when ram is there. <laughs> By the way, I saw this chicken. video. Ah, I know. I saw this video. This is ram with three horns. <laughs> three, one in the middle. Of the the ah. question is, should somebody kill this kind of ram? <laughs> That's a deity there. <laughs> <laughs> three horns, like legit. One in the middle of the ah, This thing should be keeping somewhere. Whoever is fortunate to get that ram should we can, keep it. You cannot yeah. kill this kind of ram. Yeah, you do. It's, it's a deity. <laughs> you should watch it. <laughs> morning is the news when I wake up now actually my name is Mike Messi Keno. Now President Bola Tinubu arrived in Lagos yesterday after one week working visit to France for the Paris Global Financial Summit 2023 and also a private visit to London. He left Nigeria on the 20th of June 2023 to attend the summit in France. This is the first visit of President Bola Tinubu to his home state Lagos after presidential inauguration on the 29th of May. He's in Lagos to celebrate the Salah festivities. National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu was among the early callers at the presidential wing. Some political appointees, party members and supporters were on ground to welcome President Bola Tinubu. There's going to be a guard of honor. He has, uh, the president has expressed his profound gratitude to Nigerians for the overwhelming reception accorded him in Lagos on Tuesday, conveying his best wishes to all Nigerians during the Eid el-Kabir celebrations. According to a statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Special Duties, Communications and Strategy, Dele Alake, the President received a tumultuous welcome from a massive crowd of Nigerians upon his return to Lagos following his seven-day trip abroad. Upon his arrival, the Governor Babajide Sonwondu of Lagos State, Chief of Staff to the President Femi Bajabi Amila, and Acting Inspector General of Police, uh, the National Security Advisor, Senators and Reps, from Lagos State, as well as party officials, warmly received President Bola Tinubu. He is scheduled to join fellow Muslim faithful for the Eid prayers today at the Obalende Eid prayer ground located at Donan Barracks, the former seat of the Nigerian government. Now, the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetokun, has assured. Nigerians have sustained efforts in tackling crime and improving public safety and security across the country. The IGP charged commissioners of police across states and the FCT and the supervisory assistant inspectors general of police to configure the security architecture in their areas of responsibility for robust and responsive policing ahead of the Eid El Adha celebration. The IGP particularly directed zonal AIGs and state CPs to deploy human and other operational assets to carry out confidence building and crime prevention patrols on major highways, vulnerable points, places of worships, and places of public resorts, among others. Mr. Ibritokun urged uh, the security personnel to be disciplined, professional, and respect the fundamental rights of citizens. He restated that the force will harness all available assets and synergize 
with other security agencies to boost service delivery and stabilize general security within the nation. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, has felicitated with Nigerians and the Muslim faithful on the joyous occasion of this year's Eid al Kabir. He urges them to use the period of the celebration to reflect on the purpose of the Eid al Kabir, which includes sacrifice, love, charity, and piety, among others, for peaceful coexistence and harmonious relationships with one another. He enjoined Nigerians to continue to pray for the success of President Bola Tinubu's administration as he works hard to deliver on the renewed hope agenda for the unity and sustainable national growth and development. We'll take a break now. Stay with us. There's more to come. Okay, so I was wondering, it's been a while I've been on screen and uh, I need to get a job quite soon to do something else. And then God just brought a little to me because he his next project. So what's this We are working on it together. It's not screen. The screen and the screen. Ah, sorry, oh, sorry. This is... This is... <laughs> Oludotu, you're welcome. Thank you very you're, much. You're, as a filmmaker, you've done so much. Uh, yeah. We even saw some uh, pictures there of all you've done and all of that. But let's... Uh, uh, you know, because there's a lot you do behind the scene, not yeah. many people know because mm -hmm. we are, they're more accustomed to those in front of mm -hmm. the screen. Mm -hmm. So but just blow your trumpet a little, just small, not too much. Let's just... <laughs> when you started and uh, things you've done so far, let's people get to... Uh, no, get to see the face behind some of these uh, pictures or things that they've said. Yeah. Okay, so um, once again, I like to introduce myself mm -hmm. before I even say anything. So my mm -hmm. name is Dotson Ololade. Mm -hmm. As you know, the full name is Olu Dotson Ololade Olufisai, but I like mm -hmm. that uh, Dotson Ololade part. And I am a writer, I'm a director, I'm a cinematographer, I'm an editor, and I'm a VFX artist. Ah! So... Oh. <laughs> this film... All, all, all <laughs> you're, never, you're never ready. You know, yeah. you don't give other people offer people a job on your set. Though. It's okay that will do everything. Mm, well, so the, the reason I, I learned all of that is because I feel that if you are the owner of a company, yeah. uh, you own a company and you employ some staff, somebody is doing accounting for you, the other one is your... Um, business development manager and all of that, whether you like it or not, as the owner of the company, you need to have an idea of all of these things. So I am in all of these fields because I want people to do them for me. Mm -hmm. But most times you employ people and they tell you, oh, this thing cannot be done. And that has happened to me in so many cases mm -hmm. when I get to be the one to show them that, oh, this is how you do it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, okay. So I don't want to get to that point where Somebody tells me something is impossible in filmmaking. Mm. Okay. So that's why yes, I have doing all of that. that yes. So what projects have you worked on? Uh, let people get to know a bit. Okay, so um, I would not be able to talk about all of them. them. Okay, maybe the major ones. Let what me tell our... you about one. Okay. So first of all, let me put this out there. We went to film school together. Mm. Now... This is the, his movie, Flood yes, My so Movie. You went to school for can, can, can you calm down? <laughs> so now, his down. movie, Stupid Finder, right, at Emory Life Creative Academy, won Best Picture, mm. Best Actor, Best Screenplay, Best Art Direction, Best Editing, Best Costume Directing, Best Family... Which one did you win? My, my brother. So <laughs> what we, you we, won, we won... You won Viewer's Choice, I remember. Viewer's Choice. Ojoro. So, I mean, right from then, like, even before then, I mean, I, I used to hear about the Tundo, so I know one time he walked up to me and spoke to me about the um, show and all of that. But then again, at the end of the project, it was yeah. obvious that, I mean, this director definitely had a gift. So now let's talk about that gift and how it has literally led you to winning several awards, which has made you even mean money. We're coming back to that soon. But then let's talk about how you discovered that creative part of you that actually led you through them um, thus far. Okay, so um, me getting into film... I think it's my destiny, it's my calling. Okay. And how did I arrive at that? I started out as a young child. It's a pity I can't bring some of these documents here because I still have them in the house. Wow. My nursery school, I used to paint, mm -hmm. use colors very well. When I even look at those documents today, I don't feel that, oh, it was a child that did these things. Mm -hmm. So in my secondary school days, I also became a fine artist. I could sketch you just right where you are and yeah. you look exactly like the same thing yeah i could capture you very well yeah. so um all of that was the journey but then life happened mm -hmm. nigeria you want to you want to make a living mm. Mm. so in the journey to make a living i deviated to becoming um a computer support guy after that i journeyed into becoming a network engineer mm -hmm. after that i journeyed into becoming a website developer mm -hmm. so while i was at 
web developing, I thought that uh, I needed to grow this business. Mm -hmm. Instead of submitting paper proposals to clients, I wanted something more like a PowerPoint presentation. You know, reading is boring. I wanted something more visual. Yeah. So in my research as to how do I create this kind of presentation, I found out about a software by Adobe, mm -hmm. which is um, Adobe After Effects. So, which is used for motion graphics, visual effects, and all that. So, I actually became a visual effects artist before becoming a filmmaker. Okay. Wow. So, after doing all of those motion graphics, I realized that, okay, sometimes you need somebody's footage, somebody's photograph to infuse into these footages. Then, okay. I started fiddling with cameras. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, let me see, let me see. But I am somebody who is very passionate about everything I do. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think my favorite quote is anything that is worth doing at all. Mm. is what doing well. Yeah. So if I tell you tomorrow that I'm going into the oil and gas business, mm. they should be ready for it. They should be ready for <laughs> you. Yes. Oh, Dan Kute should be sitting up. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> they, they <laughs> so that's how I ventured into film and... I'm so now the film um, Lost But Found is a project that literally just won you £1,500, right? As a you're keeping up to this like yeah, he's accountant. Oh, yes, <laughs> Every sense we're calculating it. Okay. Okay, so now let's talk about the journey of bringing that short film to life, right? The story behind it, because we know it's actually about the female gender and how that relates to you. Okay, so Lost But Found is something that uh, talks about my journey as an artist. If you looking at the name of the uh, film, yeah. it talks about me getting lost in the you know, journey of life, trying to make a living then coming back to my heart, okay. which is what happened to that lady in the film. Okay. Okay. Now, talking about the female, um, um, what's it called struggle. now? The female struggle, the girl child. Up till now, all over the world, all over the world, you still find out that people don't believe in women as much as we should. Yeah. There is this idea of, oh, it's a man's world. So I am not much of a person that says, oh, Okay, so the women should raise or wage a war against the men to become equal and all of that. But I no, think it's the not women. It's a mass war, though. Exactly. Do you know? It's the ladies honest. that run the world. It's actually. Okay, yeah. so, 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 like so people, you know, right? to talk about that, behind the scene is somebody mm. sitting and watching me right now. So that's my wife. Mm. When many decisions that men even take, you discover that you don't make the right ones without the support or check Tell them. of mm. your wife. Tell them. Mm. So. Many people tell me many things about women. Oh, your wife, you don't tell them this, you don't tell them everything. Yeah. But I discovered that the more you're open to your spouse, the more you're open to these women, yeah. the better you are at decision making. So is that what the movie captures now? Okay, so what the movie captures is the struggle of the girl child where people look at the female folk and say, okay, they belong to the kitchen, you pound yam to submission, you have to do so many things Everything that you do in your life ends in the kitchen yeah. or ends at you serving the men. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe so. If that was the case, we wouldn't have uh, Winfrey here. Mm. If that was the case, we mm. wouldn't have the phenomenal Mohabudu, mm -hmm. who has given all of us yeah. the opportunity to really yeah. you know, express ourselves. Yeah. And, and that has changed the course of my journey. That's, I would say I'll credit that to Mohabudu. Mm. Yeah. Because winning the best film director at Ebony Life, I asked myself a question, what next? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to win an award and the next thing you do is, okay, we heard that he did another film. Yeah. So this particular film, I made up my mind and told myself, I'm not just going to make another movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make that movie that changes everything. Yeah. And after that, I'm going to make another movie that changes, you know, Changes okay, my and, and that's what this project is yeah. for you. Yes, that yes, that will change. Exactly. It. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I like that. So um, let's 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 project the beat. Right. This is that movie. You said the next movie has to be a landmark and all that kind of way. What can we expect from Muludo in the next five, ten years? What is the future projection? Where where well, how far are we taking this? Okay. So I'll I'll say this to the camera, and I'm going to say this for the record. Hallelujah. That um, the world is not ready. In the next 10 years, we're going to make films that will make a real impact mm -hmm. in the lives of people. Mm. Yeah. This particular film, Lost But Found, we're going into making the feature length. Mm -hmm. Very soon, we are in the oh. pre-production of it's that. The same movie. The same yeah. movie. Same so story. we're making, it's a short film, so we're making the extended version. Yeah, I and I, I discovered that many people, many of our um, 
leading filmmakers. What they do is you make a film, you throw it on Netflix, you make a film, you throw it to Amazon Prime, you make a film, you go to the cinemas. But I feel that the real people that need this message mm -hmm. don't get to ever see them. Mm. Mm. We're talking about... Are. Yeah, they're in the grassroots. the grassroots. Okay, but, okay, but they're trying to make money. Yeah, so, so the idea is this. The way the, my approach is, I'm going to take this to the festivals. It's going to have a festival run around the world. Around the world okay. It comes back to the Nigerian cinema where the elites will, or the opportune ones will get to see it. Mm. Then we will now partner with NGOs all over the nation okay. to take it to the grassroots. It has to get to them. It has to get, okay. It has to. Yeah, but it will make his money first, shot. Of course, of now, course, yes. Yeah, okay, so, that we can so make I, another I fully one. understand where you're coming yeah. from. After that, it has to get to the point where people that this thing will impact. Yes. Exactly. Because it's not just I for you, it's, it's, not, it's a passion project. Exactly. It's not just yes. about the money. Yes. Okay, okay, me too, I'm a passion, listen by you pay me, shout. Yeah, we'll talk about yeah, after now. I also have passion <laughs> for the thing. Yeah, I don't know, but, you know. <laughs> but, you know, just uh, uh, something I just wanted to talk, talk about, just to mention, uh, just a mention on the other part mm -hmm. financing is something that is not so easy when it comes to putting movies like this together you know sure. just give us a hint of how that part how mm -hmm. as a director what you've done i mean you started with a short film i know you know but putting together financing for projects like this how does one go about all of this you know for instance if you don't have a producer if you don't have somebody bankrolling you mm -hmm. and then you have that passion just like you wanted to go somewhere how does one traverse such uh mm. tumultuous waters Okay, so I'd say that I'm somebody who is um, selfless and God has blessed me with um, a lot of social capital. Mm. And what I have done with my life is this. If you have a project tomorrow, you call me to come on your project. The last thing I'll discuss with you is money. It's the last. Ah, that's music to my ears. Yeah. Why? Honestly, because right now, I'm trying to build a name for myself. <laughs> money yeah, is the first thing you would discuss with me. <laughs> so, yeah. money is the last thing I discuss. Yeah. And because I want to serve first. Mm -hmm. And that has helped me. This short film was made using a 40-foot crane as props mm. on sets. Mm. I didn't pay. Wow. If you have to pay for a 40-foot crane, I think you'll pay at least between 40 and 80,000 naira True. to get it on set. But I got it for free. Yeah. That's because I partnered with uh, one of my friends who owns uh, Framai, mm. a film studio in Lagos. Mm. When he wanted to make some films, I helped him make those films. Yeah. And now when I need him, you know, it's Stop. scratch your back. Oh, yeah. So now I get you. I scratch your so yeah. when when you can when you can partner with people. With people, that, yes. Draw on those mm -hmm. kind of relationships and all exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. partnership. Winfrey, I'm not partnering with you if you don't bring my money. Thank you so much, Aludo. Thank it you was a very pleasure. much for having, having you. Here. And uh, here's wishing you the best. Yes. Sometime. I've seen I've seen some stories. I'm not about some people who came here and then next tomorrow, next year when you saw them. So mm -hmm. maybe some the next time when we of have course, you here, definitely. you'll be making films that are changing the world. Mm -hmm. Well done. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Right. Thank okay, you. it's been a wonderful definitely. show. Thank <laughs> you for being a part of the show. We will see you tomorrow. MM? Yes. It's good. What's, uh, uh, what, what are we having? You're, you're shopping today, so what, what, are we, what are we doing? Don't worry, Mike. We'll talk about it later on. But yeah, hey, yeah. thank you all so much for being a part of the show today, guys. Have a beautiful Eid celebration. Hmm. All right. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.